Hi everybody, welcome. My name is Lauren. Thank you so much for being here today. So today we are going to take an in-depth look at the Abeka third grade language arts homeschool curriculum lesson plans. Whew, that's a mouthful. You have not already seen, I have two videos. One is a third grade end of the year review and it includes this curriculum. So if you wanna check out what we use for our entire third grade, I will link that below. And then a second video I have is us, me and my daughter doing a lesson. And that is um, one of the grammar lessons that we did. So I will link that as well if you wanna check those out. But we have a lot to cover, so I'm just gonna get right into the video. So here we have the Homeschool Language Arts 3 curriculum lesson plans, and this is going to be lesson plans for the language, the reading comprehension, spelling and poetry, writing with purpose. This is going to be not only the handwriting, but creative writing as well. And then the readers. This is also going to be for the art projects in music if you have those. So here is a suggested daily schedule and then a suggested test schedule if you are doing the entire Abeka curriculum, including Bible and arithmetic and things like that. A sample calendar they have for you here. Parent overview of getting started. And then it's going to get right into the reading. So reading level three. It's going to introduce it, give the goals and objectives types of readers so it's going to show the types of reading that they are going to experience the types of stories that they're going to experience this year with their readers and then uh spiritual application and assigning homework spiritual application is because all of their readers have some sort of biblical or spiritual underlying tones to them um so just keep that in mind if you like that and want to do that if you are more secular and don't then that is just something to consider as well for their readers and then evaluating oral reading, um, just things to look for for that. Okay, so tips for working with reluctant learners. Now, Abeka focuses on phonics from kindergarten through second grade. In third grade, they are no longer doing phonics. However, if you came from another program or if your child came from another school, uh, school or something like that where they didn't really get a strong phonics foundation and you are wanting them to have that, they're suggesting um, using this handbook for reading and that will help lay that phonics foundation as well. So here we have the daily uh, plans and it is going to give a week overview so the objectives for the week and then it's just going to lay out a lesson one at a time so you can see each day has its own lesson and then that's a whole week's worth of lessons and then it goes on to the next so we're gonna look here quickly and we're going to see um, an example of a lesson so here they have these little pencils. Those are pencils that you write on either a piece of paper, a whiteboard or a chalkboard. And those are just gonna be words that the child is going to read. So um, make sure that they can actually pronounce the words and then you can define them if they don't really know what the, those words mean. They're going to read from shore to shore. That is their reader. And then the reading answer key, reading three answer key is going to have discussion questions in them and that's pretty much all that they're going to do as far as reading goes and i'm going to show you the reading key right now but this is just an example of how the lessons will be laid out obviously you can see this one's probably an average to shorter lesson i'd say average this one looks like it's a little bit of a longer lesson so here we have the reading three answer key now i was debating last summer whether to get this or not i kind of, i went on facebook and asked and i got mixed reviews but um some people said you need it some people said you don't I went ahead and got it anyway just to see and this is going to have um, comprehension questions for all of the reading in here from shore to shore okay so that is this book right here so when this is assigned let's say their assignment is to read pages one to six for example okay so this is going to you're going to introduce the book ask them some questions and then after they read page one you are going to read all of this and ask them questions. Some of it is think about it questions, some of it is reading comprehension questions, but the bottom line is literally after every single page, nearly every single page, page two, three, five, six, they want you to stop and have and um, ask these comprehension type questions. Now we did, I did not really end up using this because my daughter's just like the flow of reading the, the story 
Um, and then I asked them, there's comprehension questions in the back of the book. So we did it that way. Um, however, if you have a reader and you're not sure they are going to be comprehending or you're not sure they're really paying attention to what they're reading to, these are really good questions to have. Um, it just depends on how you want to use them. So this is how it's going to look. Okay, and then they show you a, even like a little Venn diagram and things like that. So let me show you what this book looks like so that you can get an idea. So words to watch for, they would want the child to read that. My bed is a boat. And then see how they have, think about it questions after that. Those questions will be in here. So even if you don't necessarily want to do all of these questions, the questions that are they have in the back if you want to give your child like an assigned reading and you don't, you're not listening to the whole thing, they read it silently to themselves, but you still want to make sure that they have gotten these comprehension questions, this, they will be here. That is how that is going to work. But again, at the end, there will be questions for your child and um, the answers will be here as well as many other comprehension questions for them. So that is what this book is going to look like. And it's going to be for all of the readers. The readers are going to be anywhere from, this is like a, um, this is about a little girl who gets adopted. So this, this whole book will be about this little girl. These will be short stories, short stories again. A lot of these will be, and also they include, sometimes they include um, in the language and in the writing, um, that you have to use these readers to like write a book report. You don't have to, but they suggest to do that. So it, that way they're kind of coinciding as well. And um, Pilgrim's Progress with Family Robinson's, these are obviously abridged versions. So this is the reading. Now you'll see every, um, like every five days, every five lessons, so lesson 10, you are going to read from the reading comprehension. So this is where this will come in. I had my daughter do these every Friday and she really liked it. I like doing them too. I think it's really good because it is going to, they read a passage and then they have to answer the questions. Sometimes they have little activities, but it's not just reading um it, it is reading comprehension in the fact that they are asking you to like repeat details from the story but it also has like critical thinking as well and they have to kind of analyze the story so it is more than just spitting out facts and making sure that they remembered what they read but they kind of have to think about it as well so i liked this i think that this is really good for um not only that comprehension to to test that but for critical thinking as well so you want to make sure that you have the t uh, teacher key it's going to look exactly like this you want to make sure you for sure have that so that you can have the answers <laughs> there was a few times where I had to like look up the answers just to make sure we had it right so that was really helpful to have that and then it's going to go into language so it language has its own section so again they're always going to kind of give teaching information tips trips tricks uh time allotment how to develop the lesson using the teacher's aids so sentence strips and the charts and things like that. And I'll get into that in a, just a second. And then tests and quizzes. So if you want to do those, we got the tests and quizzes. However, I, they were just an arbitrary grade. I just, <laughs> I graded them just so that she could see, but we didn't hand in any tests or quizzes. We are not um, accredited. So we didn't have to like make it anything formal. All right. So I am going to get right into the lesson here. We have, this is a lesson 55. So you are about 11 weeks or so into the school year. So here you have your objectives and then all of this, anytime you see a pencil, you are going to write that on the board or the paper. So you have these sentences, these groups of words in these sentences as well. You are going to uh, have play board relay. That's a, a game that's going to be in the back and you are going to need page 60 of your language workbook. That's going to be what the child does for their independent work. You have sentence strips, 7, 9, 10, 33, and 89. And those are going to be in the appendix as well. And then the teaching charts. And then enrichment ideas. So it is fine and display pictures, posters, books, souvenirs, videos, etc. about the state of Kansas. I honestly never really did these. Um, I just... <laughs> 
I did not have the time to find and display posters and videos and books and souvenirs from Kansas. So here is the warm up and review. Now I love, love, love these language lessons. They take no more than 10 minutes they are thorough, they get the job done, and they are concise. They don't have unnecessary work. They get to the point and there's a variety. So I, these are the best <laughs> language lessons, um, especially the third grade, they, they're just wonderful. Okay, so here is have the child read sentences and draw a box around the common nouns or draw circles around proper nouns. Okay, so, um, I think it's, I think it's supposed to be and <laughs> in the language book, their workbook, they are going to be doing these types of exercises a hundred times over. There is so much review with a Becca. It's, it's, there's so much review. They are not going to lack for practice and experience. So instead of writing these, I honestly save myself some time and I cover this obviously. And I'll ask her, tell me what the proper noun or tell me what the common noun is and tell me what the proper noun is. And she'll go through and we'll do all of these. And that way, um, it's just, it's just a little bit easier and quicker and makes things go a little bit smoother. Then next you have singular and plural nouns. So I would write these on the board. So that way she has the practice of changing these um, from singular to make them plural. Now you're supposed to do a board relay. I was reading what that game was in the back and basically they just write their name out and every time they get one of these right, they have to circle a letter in their name. And if they circle all the letters in their name, they win. You can time them. There's different variations. How I I would do this is we just kind of did it straightforward. I would write these on the board. She would change them and then go from there. Now these sentence strips, I will show you, they are in the back. So for what they want you to do, you are going to be using these sentence strips a lot. And um, it's just a different way to practice these exercises. So here we have, um, they want you to identify nouns, common and proper nouns, singular and plural nouns and compound nouns. So here are these sentence strips. They're here in this um, and they are all numbered and they'll read the sentence and they have to identify whatever it may be. So it may be, um, in this example, it is identifying di different types of nouns, but it could also be like adjectives. So it, they use the same sentences. There's I think a hundred sentences, but they use them in different ways all throughout the year. Okay, then you are, after you finish the sentence strips, you are going to do an oral exercise. They have these incorporated into every lesson and I love, I love them. And they're kind of, they give cute little things. So like, for example, this one says, have the child stand if the words are a sentence and raise his hands or raise hands if words are not a sentence and then they have to complete the incomplete sentence. So sometimes it'll be that, sometimes they have to like clap if it's incomplete and stomp if it's not, just little ways to, uh, change it up a little bit. So then I would go through that and then you would read these sentences. So here's the sentences. And then obviously it tells you that's incomplete. So they would have to say grow in large fields and can't, they would have to say like flowers grow in large fields. You get the, you get the idea. Then we have review comma rules. This is chart A. These are these charts that I'm going to show you. So it's going to come like this. They're going to be loose. I put them in a binder and then um, that way they're just protected, but you can laminate them or whatever you would like to do. So here is chart 3A, use a comma. And so you're only going to be learning these like one at a time. So the first, I think at this lesson, you're only using like these, you're only, you have only learned these two. Um, but by the end of the year, you're going to know all of them. I'm just going to flip through really quick so that you can get an idea of what these include. Now they are not absolutely 100% necessary, but they are helpful and they do switch it up a little bit and they do give good reminders in case you, the parent, don't always remember. I just think that they are helpful to have um, and you use them not only with the uh, grammar part, you use them with the writing part, with the writing section as well. So we really liked using these charts. I would recommend if you can get them, um, use them. But again, they're not 100% necessary. So now that you have reviewed the comma rules in the chart, you're going to go through and the child is going to go through these sentences and put commas where needed. So again, 
compares these sentences. Now, this is an average amount of writing that you're going to be doing on the board every day. So it's not like there's only two or three things. You're going to be writing multiple sentences, a big list of words, another group of sentences. So if you are if you don't mind that, then that's fine. I kind of tried to make it as quick and efficient as possible. So again, I would go over to here and I would say, okay, Larissa, where do these, where should you put the uh, commas and she would tell me. You could do it either way. This is just a way to make it a little bit simpler and easier for you as a parent so you're not having to write this. And again, it's not like they're not going to be getting these this experience and this practice because their language book has many, many, many exercises where they're doing this exact same thing. And then you are going to do for the application, it's going to be page 60. They're just going to do one page. So then you can see here, this is just going to help be like the length of, I would say that is an average lesson. Some of them are a little longer. Some of them are a little shorter. Most of the time they don't take any more than 10 minutes. Um, you can see here that uh, every five lessons, so once a week they have test two. Um, so here's a quiz. When they have a quiz, they will be doing a uh, lesson. When they have a test, it is just the test. There's no lesson, there's just the test. Excuse the state of this book. We have it just, um, you know, we used it all year. So it was well loved, well used. I'm just gonna flip through real quick and you can see. So what I think is kind of cool, they have uh, diff different themes throughout the year. So first is nocturnal creatures traveling across America. Um, zoos around the world and then space. So it's gender neutral. It's not like geared towards one, you know, boys or girls. It's stuff that kids of both genders will prefer. So you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. And again, they do so much review for just throughout the year. A Becca is spiral. So you're getting a lot of in the exercises are varied so you can see here it's not all the same thing and then what I also like is that whatever you learned they do a the top of the page it does like a review of what they learned that day okay so that was language now we're doing writing so how Abeka is laid out is the first 85 lessons they will be doing cursive and the second 85, they will be doing formal writing. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do an example of both lessons for you today. So first we have an objectives. You're gonna be writing these T's on the board, uppercase, lowercase T, and then the word Texas, draw this little thing as a warm-up. And then writing with purpose, page 24, and the cursive formation guide. So first of all, you're gonna review. Uh, they're always gonna have some kind of review built in. Um, that's why I really, <laughs> Love Abeka as well because they always are reviewing. So capital S and lowercase s. You're going to use this cursive formation guide, which I will show you in just a second, to review that with them. And then teaching um, capital T, uppercase T. So it's going to give you this bold, these bold words is going to be exactly what you're going to say to the child. So you're going to take that cursive formation chart and just say what you, how you would make a T, right? You're going to curve halfway down, et cetera, et cetera. Then you are going to use the same cursive formation guide and dictate how you would write a lowercase t. Then they are going to write uppercase and lowercase on a board and paper. And then the word Texas. This little, this is just a little warm up. They're just going to be doing this in the air. I'm really not sure what the significance of that is. It's just, I feel like it's just something different. It's just to make it a different variety. And then the application is that they were going to be doing page 24 in their writing with purpose book. So I'll show you that right now. And that is the lesson. They're going to be doing one letter at a time. And um, sometimes it's going to be a little bit longer. So sometimes it's going to have, you know, words, whatever it may be, but they're going to, these lessons are going to be pretty short and sweet. And then they do have tests as well. Um, and I'll show you those right now. So here we have the writing with purpose. I chose to get mine unbound and then I just hole punched it and put it in this binder. And it was just a little bit easier because she is a lefty. It was just easier to pull the pages out and then she could just do the page that she needed to. And then I could, uh, after I reviewed it, stick it back in the binder. 
So here you can see that their practice is going to be very similar, ex actually exactly to what it was in the lesson. So here's the warm up. Here's their practicing tease. She tried to sneak in pen anytime she could, as you, <laughs> as you can see, and she learned pretty quickly when she was writing her um, stories that pen was not going to work. Anyway, so here is, so they have that as a practice, trace and write as a sentence. There's always like two different things that they have to write in this uh on their paper. So if you saw my video on third grade, you'll kind of see, you will may already know where I'm going to go, like where I'm headed, but their cursive can be very, it can be a lot. And I don't know if it was just my daughter or it was, um, it was just how it is. I'm not sure, but she just got overwhelmed and bogged down and burnt out by their cursive. And maybe maybe some children don't mind it so much, but she definitely was burned out with their cursive and she went from loving it to hate look, see, she would try to sneak in days where she wouldn't write in cursive little stinker. So after a while, she just got totally, she went from loving cursive in second grade and it was her favorite and to in third, by third grade, she hated it. And I made her do this instead of just like saying, okay, you only have to do one or the other. I made her say, nope, you're doing all of it. And she hated it after a while. And I feel really bad because even now she still is like, gives me hard times when I have to, when I tell her to write something in cursive, she's always, always box. And it's, I, I feel like I kind of did that. And so I feel bad, but I learned my lesson. That is the cursive aspect of it. Now we're going to get into the writing portion. So here we go with the writing. So, um, so again, from lesson 85 up to lesson 170 is going to be writing. So whether it's creative writing, um, whether it is doing a book report or a report on an animal or doing a play, whatever it is, it is not just handwriting, it is formal writing. So they give a lesson, a weekly overview of what they're going to be doing for this week. So I kind of would look ahead to just kind of get an idea of like what they should do. And then this is the actual lesson. So they have... Um, the objectives and then here is research materials guide the child in researching and filling out a web organizer which I'll show you that in just a second <laughs> in case you're like oh what um, so they have to write four facts so she was going to write a paper on Dolly Madison that was this week's assignment now if you have the Abeka third grade our American heritage there is going to be an entire chapter on her and that's where you can get information we did not use their history this year so um, at least a third grade history. So I just looked up information and printed out like one or two pages on her, a biography on her. I had her highlight interesting facts in like key, key points of Dolly Madison's life. And then from there, she did the web organizer, which I'll show you in just a second. So that is what she did. And then if they finish their web organizer, they can start writing the report. So... So this is what the web organizer looked like. It is in the middle, Dolly Madison, and she was supposed to only write four interesting things, and she always goes crazy and go, does extra. So she wrote in her own, like, four or five extra. So she wrote an entire paragraph about Dolly Madison, and then I would correct it. And then from there... Um, so it just depended on how the day went. I think this one day we would make it like she read about Dolly Madison and did the web organizer. And then the next day she would do, um, she did the rough draft and I, um, made corrections and she was allowed to do this in print. She didn't have to do cursive, but for the actual final draft, she had to do cursive. So here's just an example of what her final draft looked like. And honestly, with the writing and the um, brainstorming and with the rough draft and all of the corrections she had, she would get a very discouraged when she saw, <laughs> poor baby, she would get very discouraged when she saw any like markings and she, every single time she wrote a paper, she would say, this time I'm not going to have any mistakes. You're not going to have to change anything, mom. And I tried to remind her, like, even I who write things all the time as a grown up, as an adult have to edit. And that's just part of it. So I would go a little bit lenient if she did fix these 
these uh, corrections that I had for her final draft, I did keep it lenient and I never really like said, hey, you know, fix this or fix that because she had already made the bulk of the corrections and I just didn't want to kill her spirit. At the end of the day, what is more important that she's actually writing it or that I'm criticizing every teeny tiny little thing that she didn't get done. So I was just proud that she wrote like a page's worth of, of material. So you can get an idea of like different things that they're going to be doing. Um, a rainy day project. They even have like writing prompts. So here was a book report that she had to do. So you're getting a variety of writing. Those are just extra practice pages. Um, organize a deal uh, about a place. She chose the target dollar spot. She's my daughter for short. <laughs> and then towards the very end of the year, they have um, a, a Swiss Family Robinson. She was not, not happy about that. There was many um, words that we spoke about this. So she did it. It wasn't her best work, but I think it was towards the end of the year. She was ready to be done. And then in the back, they have tests. We did not test. If you are accredited, you are going to need to test their penmanship and submit grades. I just didn't find it necessary. We did spelling tests. We did, um, the language tests and quizzes. This, I just didn't think I needed to test her on. Um, it just was a struggle enough to get her to do cursive. I didn't feel like scrutinizing and grading. I just didn't feel like I needed to do that. It just wasn't something I wanted to add into our home school. Now, so that was writing. Now we are on to spelling. So it is again going to give information and activities to enhance spelling, tips and tricks, homework, trial spelling tests, which is I'll get to in just a second, grading procedures, how to grade, and poetry, it's gonna be all in one. So here is a sample spelling test. You want, you would make a copy of this. First we have lesson five, okay? So you're kind of at the beginning of the year. You'll have your objectives. So then you'll wanna check homework. Usually, I believe their homework is always just having the child write the spelling list. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Review the spelling list out loud. So you're going to say, spell, and say the words one at a time. Um, and this for this list in particular, they're going to be clapping as they say A-I and A-Y words so that they can, I, just, I feel like that just kind of um, signals the brain to kind of remember and recognize those words. Have him correct give sentences using vocabulary words correctly. So they're going to take those vocab words that they have and make sentences out of them. Pretty straightforward. Um, close the book, say words in mixed up order, and then have them say the words. So it's just another way to incorporate and practice the spelling words. Play spelling stand up. Now, we did not use their spelling. I used Evan Moore's spelling. No particular rhyme or reason. Um, I happen to have the book of the third grade, so we use that. This spelling is fine, I'm sure. I've, I've used the Abeka spelling in the past for first and second grade, so I'm sure the third grade is fine, but it looks like they do play a lot of spelling games. So again, those are gonna be in the back in the appendix, so you can either use those or not. You can kind of make it your own. If, you're, if your child is just a straight to the point kind of kid, then maybe you don't need these games, but they are, if they are reluctant to spell and things like that, maybe incorporating these types of games is going to help uh, progress their spelling skills. And then next is gonna be poetry. They're going to um, just memorize different poems throughout the year, and they give you some prompts to, to ask the child. Okay, so non-trial test option or trial test option, option. So this would be less than seven. So you can choose which one you wanna do Non-trial is a normal lesson where they are going to say, spell, and say the words, and you're just going to carry on like a normal lesson. A test trial basically is a pretest, so I remember doing these in all throughout elementary school as well. So basically, you just give them a, a test on Thursday or whatever day before you want to do the actual test, and if they get it right and make 100%, then the next day, they don't have to do the test. Um, if, if your child is for that, then, um, maybe this one's the way to go. If not, if they need all the help they can get, and that would be discouraging to them, then go with the non-trial test option, which is just doing a regular lesson as is. And then here is the next day. So if you do the pre-test, 
and they get 100, you don't even need to do this lesson. But uh, if you choose to forego that or if they don't get 100%, then here you're going to do the spelling test and then it just shows you how to grade it. So spelling is pretty straightforward and easy. So that is it as far as the subjects go. Now I'm going to get into the appendix and you can get an idea of what their homework is. Now I was flipping through here and it looks like their homework, especially compared to the first grade homework, you're going to be a little surprised is quite easy. I don't want to say easy light. Um, it's just not as work heavy as those poor little first graders. Um, if you have not seen that video, I, I'm going to leave that in the description below and you can get an idea for how their lessons are. They are a little bit longer, to be honest, than the third grade, but they're still very doable. So check that video out if you're interested. But I just wanted to give an example of what the homework is, or I'm sorry, for what the seat work is for um, for the third grade. So here's an example. You have copy spelling list eight, write four sentences using spelling words from list eight, copy then underline common nouns and circle the proper nouns. So they would have to copy these words and then do as the direction said, copy and explain that obedience is the fruit of the faith and then fill in the blank. There's just four little things from math and then that's it. Draw a picture of yourself helping one. So you might think that that is a extra work after a full day of school. And I would say you're right. Is it necessary? Probably not. Um, but it is, Becca was written in it for a classroom setting. And um, I feel like a lot of that kind of overflows even, even though it is designed for homeschoolers. So do with this what you want. I'm not sure if accredited has to do the, the seat work or not that I can't speak on. Um, but if you are not accredited, I know for sure you definitely don't have to do this. This is just optional um, extra work to, to get. Next you have the games and they are going to be inc incorporated into the language and the spelling, as you could see. And then you have the sentence strips, which I pointed out to you earlier. There, oh, I just guessed there was a hundred. Yep. So there's a hundred of these guys you'll be using all throughout the year. Um, this is writing, so they're going to be doing sample penmanship test so that you can get an idea for those of you who have to grade or would just like to grade and, or even if you just want to get an idea. So this is what an A paper would look like. Right? This is what B looks like. And no, this is not the font that Abeka uses. This is the handwriting. This is what a C paper would look like. Let me show you what a D paper would look like. Here's a D plus. So um, they're pretty, pretty, pretty strict, pretty um, hardcore with their writing. So they give a plenty of examples with that. Spelling. All right. So here are um, not only teaching tips, but like sample sentences for every single list. So if you want to give lesson, give sample sentences for when you dictate the spelling words, they have them here for you. Okay. This is something that you will want to pay attention to. This is the spelling and poetry answer key. So all of, I don't unfortunately have a book to show you, but if you get the spelling test, I'm sorry, the spelling workbook, they're going to have ex, uh, activities that the child has to do every week. And this is going to be the answer key to that. So you wanna make sure that you keep this page in mind so that you can know how to grade those spelling activities. If you don't feel like going through them and finding the answer yourself, they're right here. All right, next is planning resources. So they have reading. This is the books you're going to read and how they correspond to the lessons. So this is how many lessons each book is going to take. They have a scope and a sequence writing scope and sequence, spelling and poetry scope and sequence, a planning calendar, activity time three. So this is, um, I'm not going to get into this. This is uh, like art and music if you want to incorporate that and their scope and sequence and um, just lesson plans. But if you do that, that is where they're going to be. Progress reports, you will not need these unless you are accredited. If you are, you better hold on to these bad boys. And that is it. 
So this is a huge book, but it is doable. Um, if you want a solid foundation, solid grammar, I, I recommend it, Becca. I know it's not for everybody, so I'm not saying everybody should use it, but I do think that if um, it is something to learn, it is worth looking into, especially if you don't mind traditional. Um, if you want something that is quick and to the point, that's kind of what me and my daughter wanted. She just wanted to learn the lesson and move on. So this is what it's going to be. Um, I really, really love a Becca especially for their language arts um, in the earlier years. It is amazing. It is great. We love it. And so um, it can be overwhelming, but if you just make it your own and find what works for you and find what works for your child, it can be a beautiful, beautiful curriculum and you can have a lot of fun with it and also get that firm, solid foundation that you may be so looking for. that was for. a lot of information. Thank you so much for being here. If you stuck around for the whole video, I appreciate it. But um, if there are any clarifications, like any questions or anything that you just didn't quite understand, I didn't spell it out clearly enough, please let me know in the comments so that I can answer those to the best I can. Or if you have a way that you do something a little bit differently that works that might help somebody else out, um, leave a comment below as well. As always, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a glorious and wonderful day and I will see you again soon. Take care. Hi everybody. Why am I doing this? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And, oh, there's a fly on my thing. Um, on my light. So much to me. Uh, and I can't concentrate with this fly on my thing. <laughs>